This is Sal. You are watching Sal TV Competitive Team Fortress 2. And I tell you what, I want to look as cool as this medic all the time. But I can't because nobody will ever look as cool as this medic ever. I mean, look at that right there. Okay, anyway, I promised. Here it is. I am bringing you a new sort of new game mode. Uh, I did want to see how this turns out. And I'm sure you're excited as well. You can see there's only four players on each team. What's the deal with that? It's 4v4. 4v4, King of the Hill, in fact. That is what we're doing today. We're going to see... Exactly how this turns out to play. Right now, you can see both teams running um, what looks like cookie cutter uh, heavy. I'm sorry, not heavy, but demo soldier, scout, and medic. Nobody dying just yet, but Smithy Boy taking a lot of damage. He's got to be careful here. I think just a little bit more pressure on him by Carlos would have done a fantastic job, but Carlos will just keep with the rest of his team here, um, holding the point. Actually, nobody's capped it yet. And finally, Beagle 66 is going to go down. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call these teams. I don't know what they are. Uh, I'm going to call it 66 degrees versus all caps. Why not? Because two of those guys are in all caps. Three of these guys... No, two of these guys have 66 degrees in their name. I really don't get it at all. Uh, Uber charge popped here. This is not a great idea. And you're seeing 66 degrees. You're probably not going to see the highest level of play here from them uh, because they are not 66 players, at least that I can tell. Um, certainly not at the top tier of the 6v6 game. So you're going to see them make pushes that are a little bit weird. Who cares? I mean, it's going to be a fun time anyway. But what we're really trying to get a feel for is what works and what doesn't in this uh, this 4v4 King of the Hill setup and the style. Because guess what? Uh, I want to see players try this out who are a little bit more competitive than I think we're going to be seeing here. Like, uh, you know, I, I would love to see, for example, Banny or... Uh, Platinum play on on this style of map whether it's viaduct or whether it's like nucleus I, I think viaduct should probably work pretty well um, Actually, by the way since we're on viaduct and we, we can't miss there it is Not only is there dog bread, but now there's a little alien space invader too. Oh my god. It's so cute I didn't realize it was there. Okay. Well that made my day. Um, anyway Yeah, so I want to see this map done with basically crowd favorites um, and players who were amazingly awesome. We are going to try and get as much of the action on camera as possible. I did not touch his whisk. No, believe me, I, I, my hand stayed as far away from that whisk as possible. Definitely no inappropriate whisk touching going on for me. Uh, of course, the medic here did take some damage. He goes ahead and pops you, saves himself. Uh, so far this round looking pretty one-sided. But yeah, I'm going to set up a little uh, survey for you guys, and I'm going to host a show match with 4v4. The idea being... We're going to use the same rules as this 4v4 setup. Uh, it's going to be the first and maybe a little series of like strange show matches where we try different uh, different styles all the time. So we could try a pick band style. We could try all kinds of stuff. Um, and I think for this first time around, we're seeing a pyro, interestingly enough. I want to see how that pyro does eventually, but uh, who knows. I'm going to die very, very soon. What I want to see, though, um, is I think for this first time around, I'm going to offer the hundred dollars that I've gotten from that Patreon site, which is pretty awesome. Uh, this month, by the way, I'm going to do that monthly instead of per video. Uh, just, just in case you were wondering. But I am going to go ahead and use the, the first hundred dollars I get out of that to, uh, to sweeten the pot for whatever tournament I'm doing. So, uh, not tournament, but show match. So, we're going to do a show match. It's going to be basically people you vote on, so I'm going to link the vote. And uh, everybody who participates, so all the winners of the vote who actually play in the game, will get some money out of that $100 pot. Of course, the winners should get a little bit more, but, uh, you know, it'll be a nice little Merry Christmas gift for all of them, or New Year's, or whenever we actually manage to play based on the player's availability. Um, so vote. Please vote on who you want to see you know, win some money, play some 4v4, have some fun, whether it be YouTubers or, uh, you know, high-level 6s players, 9s players. I do want to see some interesting class variation. I want to see some high-level play. Um, so we, at the very least, need one, like, you know, amazing team captain, Banny style, whatever. Nice! Amazing play by Winters, though, actually. This guy knows what he's doing. So, <laughs> of course, I'm, I don't mean to knock these players at all. It was a, a great, um, you know, Goomba stomp on top of the enemy's head. He's going to jump in. Looks like he lost most of his team, but it is in overtime right now. Uh, we are pretty soon going to see blue team probably retake this. Smithy Boy trying his best. He's uh, he's having a little demo man on demo man fight here. This looks almost like you'd have in a uh, MGE style game. Let me start capping that back. Not quite getting the air shots just yet, but these rollers could do a lot of damage to that enemy soldier. That's R3L over there, and that is going to be that. He had to back away. Not able to stop the, uh, the onward march of team all caps. I'm almost positive, by the way, it's not their team name, but we're totally going with that because um, that's all I got. I did not get a lot of information about this game. Uh, I, what I did get was that these were basically the two best teams, uh, and at one point, there's supposed to be some kind of a rules violation. So one thing that's interesting about 4v4, at least as the rules they've played it in this league go, 
Uh, you're not allowed to have both a medic and a heavy at the same time on the field. You can have one or the other, you can never have both, because both of them just makes it a little bit too much in favor of the heavy medic combo, and it becomes really slow and kind of boring to watch. As, as iconic as the heavy medic combo is for TF2, um, it's not great for competitive play. It just makes things a little bit too stale, and it's like, oh, well, that heavy spun up slightly faster, so he's going to win this. F okay, all right. And then uh, basically the heavy stops all of the bombers as well. So if anybody's trying to go for air control like all those soldiers and demo men flying all over the place, um, the heavy can just turn his gun upward and stop that in its tracks. And it's not a lot of skill involved in doing so, which is why everybody kind of gets mad about it. Anyway, it's, uh, long story short, heavy medic combos are annoying to play against and uh, a little bit annoying to watch sometimes too. Good damage coming out by Smithy right now. We've got Carlozzo jumping up on top of his enemy scout's head. In fact, I think he like uh, double jumped several times on top of Pipsqueak. He's going to take some damage though. And uh, good damage coming out right now by both teams. The Uber though is going to make all the difference here as Beagle is going to get taken out. Finish off with a shotgun of Winters. Z -z 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 -z. That's a Z on the end of Winters name in case you couldn't tell. Um, so it is not just any normal winters. It is like the coolest winters on record. <laughs> you get it? Because I don't. I honestly have no idea where I was going with that. So if you got it, let me know. Um, like you win a prize. R3L going to go ahead and lay some sticks down. He's going to try and push his team forward. There's not a lot of damage production coming out of the red team, frankly, here. So there, there's not a lot they can do about this. But uh, I'm kind of liking the style, the format of 4v4. Um, it's a bit hectic. You know, it, it seems a lot like 6v6, except there's fewer players to keep track of, so you can tell how the fight's going to go a little bit easier. Um, I like the style. I think Did You Touch His Whisk is doing a pretty good job of staying alive as a med and popping those Ubers when he needs to. He's going to have his Uber very, very soon here, so as long as he doesn't die, uh, it should be pretty good. There's not a lot of variation in the classes so far. So uh, that's one thing I want to see. Like, I heard that Pyro can do a really good job in 4v4, but we haven't seen that happen yet. Like, a pocket Pyro can protect the medic very, very well. Um, maybe almost better than a pocket soldier can, but eh, I don't know. Yeah, Beagle's doing a pretty good job jumping in. Uh, he does go ahead and take down both Winters and Pipsqueak. It's a two-kill streak for the man with the antlers. Getting into the festive Christmas spirit here, and we've got enemies trying to dive bomb in, take down the med. Not going to happen, so that is going to be a nice cap by Team 66 Degrees. I assume that's Celsius, which would make it extraordinarily hot, and not Fahrenheit, which is just kind of... Eh. A little bit under room temperature. 66 degrees, ladies and gentlemen. Now you know. You know your temperature conversion. Um, or at least you know it for 66. We've got an attack coming around the left-hand side here. Not going to do a heck of a lot, especially because this gentleman seems isolated. No, okay, he's got some backup from Winters on the Soldier. Pipsqueak, meanwhile, staying back to uh, build Uber with the Med. So it looks like our blue team actually does have a very solid grasp on the meta of this uh, King of the Hill style. They're dive bombing in, trying to take down the med uh, with classes that basically don't matter. You're going to have uh, now their med pushing forward because they realize they've just about got their uber. They need to make sure they build this, though. Can't lose your med with 91% health. Okay, there you go. 91% uh, uber. Uber charge. Nice shots by Winters. So this is the guy to watch right here. Winters is doing a fantastic job on the soldier. Um, having a little trouble with this scout here. Well done by... Uh, it's going to be Carlazzo. Utilizing every last bit of that uh, scout, what do you call it, um, twitchiness. He is a twitchy, twitchy scout. But also the double double jump that he used on top of the uh, the house there makes it very difficult to predict exactly where he is going to land. And um, I'm assuming he's not using anything like the, uh, no, he's using the Boston Basher. So that's pretty standard. The Uber has been popped. Not doing a lot. And there you go. Coletto going to finish off Smithy Boy. He is trying... Oh, no. It is not finished off yet. There you go. Now it's it's done. It's just Coletto and Beagle. And the, that means the longer that we see um, our, our blue team stay alive here, the better off they will do, of course, because they've got uh, just the heels going down. So that's going to mean Carlotto down. And now Pipsqueak just has to deal with a soldier. Congratulations to him. Very nice job. But you see the time's almost tied up there. Uh, it's going to be uh, red with a minute left to go. Blue with just under a minute. Remember, blue team did win that last round. Doing a very good job so far. You're seeing R3L and Carlotto not really coming into their own just yet. Very good play by Pipsqueak. Taken down uh, Schwumpf, who was way overextended. And that is just, uh, just goes to show you a little bit of understanding makes all the difference on a map like this. Where if one team realizes, okay, keep our med back until he's got 90% uber, and the other team doesn't realize that at all, uh, you're going to see one team with a vast uber difference. 
Uh, you got Smithy Boy with two air shots. We haven't seen your air shots yet, Smithy Boy, so I apologize. We've been focusing on the flashy, flashy soldier with his uh, Spartan helmet. And Carlotto, interesting. We totally missed that. We might have to do a little instant replay action. Okay, sorry about that. So we completely uh, forgot that there was a spy uh, because I was so very concerned with all that kind of stuff. But here we go. Carlotto going in behind the med. He's got the regular Invisiwatch, grabs that uh, metal kit, which nobody seems to notice. And then he decloaks really, really close to them. They should have realized it was coming because you can hear the decloak, but a perfect kill onto Did You Touch His Whisk? And he gets away clean with it. So we'll see if he can cause some more havoc behind enemy lines. They are kind of focusing on the invading attack right now. But Schwamp gets taken down once again. Not good for the red team here because they are losing players. And now Carlotto will get a nice little corner stab on the soldier can he finish off the demo no and that's going to mean the blue team holds the point and wins that round very nice spy play but the thing is uh once he revealed himself and killed that med the the rest of his team really had to pick up the slack and they just weren't able to get those kills um even with their own medic so that is too bad for them it is going to be back to the cookie cutter 4v4 the uh Almost the same class as we see holding the line in 6v6. R3L is kind of flubbing his uh, his rollout jump there just a little bit, unless he really intended to land exactly on that. Maybe he did, I don't know. Normally, though, you want to get a little bit further forward, I would think. But he's with the rest of his team now. And, uh, wow, look at this. Team 66 Degrees actually doing a fantastic job of laying down the damage on their opponents. You see um, the blue med, did you touch? Having to get really, really far back here and took a lot of damage he had to take that health kit which means that the red team is going to probably get this point first there you go they are just gonna finish that off beagle down but the rest of his team is just fine med going ahead and using that regen what is our blue med doing here no the crossbow is not the weapon you want to be using uh oh and he gets taken down by uh what is that the pretty boys pocket pistol i do believe which does does that one do less damage um i want to find out come on tell me tell me is it it's minus i can't even tell i think it's minus damage somebody correct me if i'm wrong because i'm a total idiot um, do let me know, by the way, guys, how you were enjoying this 4v4 setup as opposed to the normal 6v6. And uh, remember to vote on our 4v4 uh, participants because I really want to see a 4v4 like um, all-star match as chosen by you, the TF2 viewers. Um, that's pretty much it. That's all I got. Uh, ooh, ouch. We got some we got some harsh language going on down there in the bottom left, but of course you guys are TF2 viewers. You are used to it. You know exactly what's going on. 66 degrees still holding that point, and they're holding it for a very long time. That's one thing we're seeing with these two teams is that they're really not able to uh, to take the point from each other too quickly. Uh, Beagle going for the air shots, not really hitting him, although he did hit a nice little uh, um, reflect off the backboard there against the what do you call it? The barn? I guess it's the barn. The building? The house. They, I think they usually call it the house, but whatever. It looks like a barn. Um, R3L is going to try and, well, I don't even know. He's not laying down. There you go. Finally takes one shot. I think I might, if, if I were him, I would have taken more shots there earlier. Uh, not going to happen though. And we got a pyro. No, never mind. Darn it. Really hoping we had a pyro there because I want to see how pyro does, especially against a setup like this. Like you see two classes where you can get good reflect and there's only one class that he really can't uh, deal with too well. That is the pyro. You've got the Kritzkrieg from the blue team right now. Smitty Boy jumping in trying to get some damage, but he gets piped down by R3L. You've got uh, Winters. He's going to jump in now and we'll see if Winters can make anything happen. Let's find the Winters cam. Winters going to jump in. Doesn't find the med just yet. He does now, but it's not even laying any damage down. So that's going to be too bad for them. Still... Oh, this is interesting. Smithy going with, uh, oh no. Oh, he realizes he doesn't have the caber. That sucks. <laughs> Smithy boy, you tried, you tried valiantly, but your caber was gone. And so he went with the sticky jumper caber route, realizing far too late that he did not have his caber ready to go. Oh, that's too bad. It would have been hilarious if it worked, but even more hilarious that it didn't. Pipsqueak actually on the pyro now, using those reflects to maximum advantage, trying to keep his medic safe and doing a pretty good job of it so far. Um, but the question is, can he make this work any further? They've got the crit Creek, I think, ready to go, and that means the crit rockets are coming in. Not quite going to work for him just yet. Good damage laying down by Pisqueak. That means he does end up getting Carlazzo taken down. The regular Uber is down, though, so that crit's not going to work quite yet did you touch his whisk is not able to touch his opponents with the uber saw which is going to be just a little bit too bad for him he's got to retreat try and get the heals going on build the uber faster than his opponent i think he should be able to do that watch those uber percentages very very carefully because crits creek builds faster than regular uber if they can get the damage done but do you remember you normally see the crits creek used on a demo man and oh that's too bad i forgot about the time and it's going to be two to one team red actually winning it so this is going to get a little bit closer i do want to see pyro uh, brought into his own right because so far Pipsqueak has been doing a good job. He's using this power jack, which I'm pretty sure as long as you have it out, gives you a speed boost. Uh, so they replaced the set bonus with um, 
just the power jack doing it by itself. Nice and interesting. Oh, nice reflect there. Didn't get the damage done, but did do a, uh, a very good job on the reflect. Pipsqueak going to go ahead and continue reflecting all of this projectile spam away from his own medic and his own team. Um, because remember that you still get those mini crits when you manage to reflect enemy damage. Plus, he's got the crits coming out of his... Uh, if he can hit them, he's going to have... Yeah, there you go, Pipsqueak getting the crits on that flare gun. So this is what you want to see out of your pyros, ladies and gentlemen. Um, despite the fact that he's using like the poorest of the poor hats. He's got uh, the Summer Shades and the Jibus. But he's doing a fantastic job of juggling this Uber around, making it completely useless. This is what you want to see out of a Pyro in 4v4. You want to see him shutting down the demo, shutting down the uh, soldier and maintaining his team's positioning, doing a very good job of laying down a lot of damage on the crits when he can get close. Um, so I'm liking Pipsqueak's play so far. Now, he does finally get taken down there, uh, a little bit overextended, and that means at 66 degrees, we'll be able to push right in here and probably take the point. They want to take down our enemy med as well. Uh, wow, nice. That's going to be R3L with the kill on the med. Meanwhile, Beagle's Rockets keeping his opposing soldier right there in the corner. Smithy Boy, not sure what he's doing yet. Looks like he's going to go for a suicide. Trying to find his opponents with his sticky bombs. Pippi Prom. I don't know what a Pippi Promise is, but it's. <laughs> I might actually use that from now on. I've heard Pinky Promise, Pinky Swear. I've never heard Pippi Promise, but from now on, whenever I promise somebody or somebody promises me, I'll be like, wait, do you Pippi Promise me? Like, because otherwise it's not worth it. Like, I don't believe you. Um, apparently, people don't like it when you go Pyro, but Pyro is totally legit, so I don't want to see any of that kind of language. Pyro is a legit class, especially in 4v4, where uh, you can do so much work with it, shutting down the uh, jumpers. Of course, people don't like the fact that you can shut down those jumps sometimes, that you can shut down the spam, but uh, hey, welcome to TF2, where the skill cap is uh, different depending on what you're facing. Uber is popped for our red team. They're going to be able to hold on to this just for now. And oh, the blue team. I was complimenting them earlier on the fact they were able to keep their med alive for so long. Now they're making a lot of mistakes. Oh, interesting. Okay, this is where the... Uh, the rule violation came in. So Winters came up on the heavy. He was out at the same time as the med. He gets taken down anyway. So, you know, kind of a slap on the wrist there instead of uh, a stoppage of play. Nice kill by R3L. Not going for the caber just yet. <clears throat> oh, man. I've been talking like this for so long. It's starting to hurt my throat. But, yes, nice play by uh, R3L and the rest of his team, really, to hold on to this. And now he is going to go for the kill on the med. Not able to hit that last pipe, which would have done tremendous damage. Killed the med, but it doesn't even matter because he walked out there once again and ate it. Carlazzo getting the kill on that medic. So I'm not sure what uh, what's going through their heads right now. They are pushing their med way too far forward, though. They've I mean, they've got a huge time deficit this round, so it could just be they're trying to cap as quickly as possible, but that's just not how you play Viaduct. Uh, you have to sit back until you've got some kind of advantage. It's okay to bomb you know team members in, have your, your soldier in your demo dive bomb, um, but it is not okay to sacrifice your med over and over and just never get anywhere, which is what we're seeing. Schwab has 100% Uber right now, and we're seeing the med go down once again. This is just like throwing themselves at a brick wall. They're not even forcing the Uber pop right now. They might finally do it, but Schwab's just like, nah, we'll let the soldier die. It doesn't even matter. Just be jumping in. Can he get a kill? Can he force a pop? This is what he has to do, but he's not even going for the med right now. He's going for the demo. I'm not sure why that is, but no pop. <coughs> and the med will just keep healing. R3L takes down Pipsqueak with some sticky bombs. Well placed on that. Uh, he, he could tell, by the way. R3L was like, yeah, I know you're going for the health pack. So, uh, no. Just no. And really, this demo is starting to pick up the pace here. Takes down Smithy Boy. No problem at all. He finally gets taken down uh, himself. But here, finally, they pop the Uber now. Did you touch his whisk? Doing some good dodging. He's got some actually uh, some sick medic dancing skills. But it may not be enough as there is a soldier and a scout on him now. Oh, and he tries to dodge it, but it is too late. Carlazzo with that pocket pistol once again. Going to take him down. And that's going to be that. So it's 2-2 two two, uh, with blue team kind of face planting exactly like this little demo man ragdoll has done. Um, I feel bad about him, but in a way I don't because this is actually pretty exciting. This is exactly what I wanted to see out of a 4 versus 4 on Cough Viaduct. Very good level of play, despite the fact that I don't know any of these players. They are looking phenomenal 
And I do recall that this was supposed to be like the very top two teams playing in the playoffs or whatever it was. So one of these teams wins the big grand prize, whatever it happened to be for the 40 before league. Um, I hope this gains a little bit of traction, but we'll see whether the uh, the existing competitive scene can accommodate a 4v4 style or not. Whether they even like it, I don't know. Um, Schwamp taking some damage there. Looks like Team 66 Degrees in the red. Gonna have to back out, uh, build that Uber up just a little bit. What is going on with our Blue Med? Did he just respawn? I think he did. 0% on the Uber charge, so he may look cool, but he's feeling a little antsy right now. Hoping that the rest of his team can keep him alive. Uh, long enough to have the 100% uber <clears throat> to defend that point. But even if they don't, they're only going to lose the point for, you know, two minutes at a time. It's been, like, really tough for them to recapture it once they lose it. So that's one thing that we're seeing in this game. Like I said, it, it just, whichever team wins the mid-fight seems to be the one that wins the round because they hold that point for so long. Uber is forced by that red team. So now, uh, if I were blue, I would be saying, okay, they are going to try to force our uber. They're going to try to get our med. So just back up a little bit. Let them try it. Um, let them cap it for a minute. That's okay. We're going to come back in here with the Uber. Uh, probably overextending a little bit, but no, they're really not because they realize they've got a huge advantage here. Winters needs to hit, get some heals on, but Smitty Boy going to chase down the med. Have no problem dealing the damage. 60 health left on this med. Can he get the sticky? No! Swamp 66 gets back into the, uh, the Roy. But we'll see what happens here, whether or not this demo actually manages to get out against the uh, sticky trap. Looks like he realized it was there, and they are going to rotate around to another side, so you got Carlazzo coming around the left. Um... Flanking, seeing the, the blue team are really not paying a lot of attention to him, but he doesn't want to get himself killed just yet, so he will back off. R3L down, so if I were Schwamp, yes, this is exactly what I want to do. Back all the way through these doors. Be like, okay, uh, guys, we need a little bit more time on the point. Beagle in an interesting position, waiting for his opponents to come in here. There is a lantern in my camera. What is going on there? But, uh, no, that's that's not going to work for him. Oh, hello. Too bad he wasn't watching that sticky trap or realizing... Like, if you watch your uh, your Sticky Bomb counter, sometimes it'll tell you when to detonate. But he wasn't watching either one. Sadly for Smithy Boy, he did not get a beautiful detonation that could have done a lot of damage. Slowed this thing down just a little bit. Uh, we do see... Oh, nice! Double pipe by R3L. Going to take down that med. Was it worth it? Yes, I think it was. Smithy Boy is the only one left alive for his team. He is probably going to try and dive bomb in or do some... Well, no, just some uh, long-range artillery damage on his opposing team. Eats another rocket. 11 health left. It's not going to take much to kill this poor, poor demo man. Carlazzo on the cleanup duty with a uh, very, very authoritative stance on that. So we'll see how long our red team can actually hold this. Because right now it is 2-2, two two, ladies and gentlemen. And my teeth hurt. Yeah, that's right. I just went there with that. It came out of left field, didn't it? No, well, it actually didn't. Because here's the deal. Uh, you know the uh, Invisalign braces? Have you ever heard of those? Because if you have... You know what I've got? I've got Invisalign braces on. Basically, these little invisible trays that are 3D printed. I change them once a week. Uh, because once a week is when my orthodontist told me to. Um, but they go over my entire like lower and upper teeth. So it's it's like these invisible... Um, oh, nice shots by Beagle. Getting the kills. Because he's got the skills to pay his invoices. Yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to be as unpredictable as possible. It's not working, I know. Uh, anyway, no, so I've got these things on my teeth that basically, uh, long story short, they're supposed to straighten my teeth over time. It's, it's pretty cool technology, except for the fact that uh, they make my gums hurt and I have developed a lisp because I cannot talk with these things on. <clears throat> All right, well, anyway, so that's my, that's my complaint of the day. Um, nice kill. I, I'm not sure why Smitty Boy thought that it was a good idea to peek his head out there, but he did. Ate a bunch of spam, and now the times are getting very, very close together once again. So this is well done by the red team. 66 degrees. Uh, holding on to this point far longer than I thought they would. I'm not sure whether they play the 3 or 4. I'm pretty sure it's 4, given the, uh, the time that I saw when I redid the, you know, the, the, the slow motion. The replay! That's what I'm talking about. Am I just really bad at casting? I think I'm really bad at casting, guys. I'm... This might be it. This might be the last one I ever do. <clears throat> Just forget the vote. Don't even worry about it. I'm, I'm done. I'm retiring. Forever. I mean it this time. <laughs> Carlazzo with a good kill on Winters. We've got the Uber Pop that's going to push our uh, red team as far forward as possible. They do take down the med. Very well done to them. you got Pipsqueak behind them, actually, going for the back cap. Uh, will he get it? No. Just barely 
does not. But he gets a nice kill on Schwamp. He is taking a lot of damage. Probably that shotgun chipping away at him. No, it is actually going to be the scout doing most of the damage. No, Beagle finishes him off with the kill. Um, but the question is, can they stop the rest of the aggression for the blue team? It looks like uh, Smitty Boy, as long as he can stay alive, he's going to be doing a pretty good job of dealing a lot of damage. Arthriel laying down a sticky trap over here, just trying to stop him. Did you touch his whisk down to Beagle 66? So that does mean Smitty Boy is going to go on an aggressive rampage. Can he get the point captured? I doubt it but we're going to see him try. Nice kill on Carlazzo. That's probably uh, with a lot of help from his friends because one pill is not enough to take down a, uh, a scout, not unless he got that lock and load, which is pretty crazy. It is overtime right now, so they desperately need to put time on the point as much as possible, the blue team, but they're not going to be able to. It's just Smithy Boy out here. He's trying. No, uh, not just Smithy Boy. I'm sorry, his, his uh, soldier, his scout, doing a good job. Oh my God, nice kill by Smithy Boy. So that is going to be potentially a cap by the blue team. Uh, even a needle kill coming out there onto one of the meds. Carlotto retreating. He's got that 140 health, which feels so nice. Uh, but they got a minute left to cap this point. <clears throat> the Ubers are basically even. Uh, are they coming up on a crit screen? Is the only question. No, he's on a regular Uber. I'm not sure I agree with that choice entirely. But they're going to go and try to get this done. Beagle getting taken down right away. Schwamp backing off. He realizes they are not going to get anything done unless they get the kills, and they do. Carlotto and Arthur going huge. That's going to be 3-2 to two for the red team. Very good recapture. Blue did what they could, but that was it, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, I guess we're just going to talk here for a minute. That was it. That was a fantastic round. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. 4v4, please vote on uh, who you want to see in a 4v4 show match for 100 bucks. Stay tuned here. Subscribe. I am, of course, Sal, and I love you.